So in this session, we're going to talk about theory of change. I'm David Hurl, um, and I'm the course director for the Certificate in Competence in Monitoring and Evaluation. This PowerPoint is a fairly detailed explanation of theory of change. We also have a short video which summarizes theory of change, and you should also watch that as well. Nothing can be a think monitored or evaluated until we are very clear what we are doing and the change we want to happen. It's important that we can tell the story and we need to predict the results that will be achieved for the inputs and activities we put in place. And a sense of change happens influences how we design activities and therefore what we have to monitor and evaluate. If you don't know where you are going, any road will take you there, as said by the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland. So the theory of change is a tool that's become very popular now in development projects to help us articulate the change process. Let's first think, though, a little bit about the word change. And we might start by asking the question, does change happen in a straight line? Is it just a little bit of help, a lot of hard work and development? Maybe, yes, in some cases, maybe not. Does change happen in a cause and effect way? Meaning if we do something, that results in an effect. And it's the combination of a number of elements, different inputs leading to the thing. So it's not just one thing, it's a number of things that we need to happen simultaneously or over the project level. Or is change happening in a contributory way, i.e. one ingredient for a cake? Is it a ripple effect, a big splash in the middle and little movement at the edges? Is it a cumulative way, like a drop in a flowing river? Or is change just random and unpredictable with multiple influences interacting differently depending on context? So I think there's many different ways we can think about change. And over the course of the number of years I've been working in development, a number of names have been applied to this process. Logical framework, program theory, program logic, intervention framework, pathways map, and so on. Lots of them. But one I think you do need to be kind of very aware of is theory of change. And it's become a popular methodology to use. And in this session, I want to take you through some of the ways of doing that. Basically, the theory of change is a big picture analysis of how change happens. It's an articulation of a pathway in relation to this. A framework to describe expected impact as a basis for testing whether the pathway was correct and the assumptions were also correct. We can present the theory of change as a picture in any format that we want. So there's no one way to present your theory of change. And we'll have a look at some examples later. What we do need to be able to do, though, is create a logic model. And by a logic model, it's a series of if-then statements. If we do something, then that happens. So if we have certain resources are needed to run your program, if you then have access to them, then you can accomplish your activities. 
So these are things you do. If you can accomplish these activities, then you will have delivered the services you planned. And if you have delivered the services as planned, then there will be benefits for clients, communities, systems or organizations. It's also important to be very clear what is the problem we are trying to solve. And we do this by firstly understanding the situation, defining the problem, setting the objectives, organizing the logic. And what we try to do is make sense of a situation and try to put some logic into that. So we try to define what we think will be our outputs and what will be our outcomes. And of course, in order to achieve those outputs, it is the inputs we provide and the activities that we do that will generate the outputs. So to be effective, we need to have a big picture analysis of challenge happens and the context we are working in. So in order to work our way around the situation as it might be fairly chaotic, as we saw in that last slide, we've got to try to articulate a pathway in relation to this. And we have to develop a framework to describe the expected impact as a basis for testing whether the pathway was correct and the assumptions were also correct. Assumptions are being those things that are beyond what we are doing, things we do not control. And as I said before, how we show the picture can take any format so long as it helps us aid the process of uncovering and developing the assumptions. So let's define a theory of change as one that provides a roadmap to get you from here to there. If it is good and complete, your roadmap can be read by others and show that you know how to chart your course. And this is a definition as defined by the Center for Theory of Change. Could be thought of as a process of thinking in action, designed to get away from rigid planning models that date quickly and lose their relevancy. It allows you to understand and tell the story of your action, i.e. the activities and things that you are doing as a project or program. Very important that in establishing a theory of change at the design and planning stages. So this is something you do at the very start of your project or program. If we get the theory of change right, it very much helps to underpin and set the framework for our monitoring and evaluation system. It encompasses a process for determining how change might or is expected to happen in its context. A picture of how an effort or initiative is supposed to work. A picture explaining why a strategy is a good approach to the issue at hand in the context including enabling and inhibiting factors and assumption. And an explicit, often visual statement of the activities that will bring about change and the results expected. And finally, something that provides a common language and point of reference, meaning if we have a well-designed theory of change, all the stakeholders can look at it, build around it, and it helps to gain ownership of what we're trying to do. We can use theory of change to find the building blocks that our work requires if it is to be effective. And those building blocks might include our outcomes, our results, accomplishment and preconditions. Preconditions are those things that should happen 
prior to the start of your project or program. In order to do it, a theory of change is a brainstorming type of methodology. Um, often we do it in a big group and we actually use the things like post-its and just trying to organize a series of post-its in some kind of order. And it's all around contesting ideas, discussing ideas. So I would argue the process of establishing the theory of change is nearly as important as the result. So it's a good way for all stakeholders to get involved in the process. How do we develop this theory of change? Okay, a number of steps. Firstly, try and think of what are your long-term goals. So what are you trying to do as a program or project in terms of the long term? What is the higher order things? What would you like to see happen? So it's not a bad idea to start at that stage. What is the big change that you want to see happen? And then what we try to do is work backwards from that situation. So in order to achieve our dream or goal or whatever you like to call it, what are the steps that are needed in order to reach that situation? And we call that backwards mapping. And you can do this in and, and illustrate it in so many different ways. So entirely up to you how, how you do this. So here is a fairly um, sort of moving more like a problem tree approach. So moving from the bottom to the top. And so what you try to do is build up the steps. So in order to uh, work out in this example, how would disabled refugee children have more opportunities to employment when they become adults? The steps below are all those things that we need to make sure happen. Some we might do as a project. Some might be done by other people. That's OK, as long as we are sure that those people do that. And that actually is an example of an assumption. And as I say, this third stage is about identifying those assumptions. Things we take for granted that we assume will happen. So these are things that are happening beyond our control. And often um, something that could cause us an issue with our project. So if we assume it is going to happen, then it has to happen for our project to be successful. The problem arises if it does not happen. And therefore, our project will fail as a result of the external assumption not happening. So a tip here in any monitoring and evaluation work we do, we must also monitor those assumptions as well. Uh, fourthly, how is the round identifying the interventions that your initiative will perform to create your desired change? Interventions are the things that take up most time in a project. Examples might include the outputs, processes, administrative frameworks and data extraction. The fifth stage is around developing indicators. This stage focuses on finding the right measures to assess the implementation and effectiveness of the initiative. This is where you make sure the theory of change is aligned with your ME framework. And the last stage is writing the narrative to explain the logic of the initiative. So you need to try to come up with a compelling story about the change. It allows participants to find normal language to tell the story of their action and gives them confidence in its logic. And might typically, but doesn't have to follow these steps, include the background, the long term goals, the intermediate goals, the assumptions and justifications, interventions and what is your project or program logic. I would say that the process of developing the model, if done in a participatory way, can both energize and rally support for the initiative. Thus, facilitation, ownership, participation and empowerment are very important elements to this process. The use of the model by implementers can generate motivation and movement in a common direction. All the theories rest on some kind of foundation of logic. 
specifically the logic of how change happens. Perceptions of logic and change can be culturally determined and will vary from context to context. The same people that would be included in the planning of any activities, the same principles of inclusion, ownership and empowerment apply. You need to consider whether the theory of change is externally imposed or internally driven. You re really want it to be owned by everybody, not something that somebody outside your organization has asked you to do. Um, in that sense, it will not have the real value that you want. If you are the facilitator of the theory of change process, it's about being a good facilitator, obviously, but also a good listener. So taking listening from other people. And eventually, the fun part or the complicated part is, can you turn all of those ideas into a graphic? So if you've got in the team somebody who has an interest in graphics, fantastic, because they can try to really make it happen. In theory of change, assumptions are important and central but there is no clear definition of what is needed. And it can be referred to as the necessary conditions for change, underlying conditions or resources that need to exist for plan change to occur, or common beliefs rather than critically interrogated evidence. Some of the issues with theory of change, a lack of shared understanding, Assumption that they can be easily constructed without deep understanding of the cultural, political context of society and change. High chance of disempowering beneficiaries if not done respectively and for their benefit. If done well, they take a lot of time and resources. If done poorly, they tend to be inaccurate, irrelevant and lack transparency. I would say it's fairly complicated to develop a theory of change, um, but not totally complicated, but it does take time. It's very important, I think, that you need to understand the problem we wish to solve, the context we work in, and the stakeholders. Let's I think, look at a few examples just to show you uh, how you might present a theory of change. There is no one way you do this. You try to draw it as it suits you. So in this case, you can see they've got a series of sort of steps. Um, interlinking things is always useful. Uh, it's very likely that these relationships are not very linear. And so you try to show a uh, kind of thing. Another example here. They've got a sort of linear central area and then a few elements that capture everything around the outside. Here a more linear progression. And another one, uh, again, a combination of a linear with connecting. So as you can see, there's no one way. And what tends to happen in practice is you draw it once. And then you come back to it and you amend it and amend it and amend it. So it might take quite a few goes to get it correct. And yet another one here. So I, I really want to show you that be as creative as you can in this process of creating your theory of change. The important thing is, will the diagram be able to help you tell the story? So a test of theory of change could you tell me in, say, three or four minutes exactly what you're trying to do in terms of the change you want to see as a result of the interventions you are putting into the situation? So you can come back and revisit and have a look at some of these if you would like to, if that helps. As you can see, there's a lot of um, creativity in this presentation process.